Hello friends! Today's video is going to be a bit more of a just chit chat kind of thing because I am in the process of making a much larger project that I'm kind of waiting for some equipment for. <laughs> and for the upcoming tarot spreads, I need a camera mount that gets higher so I can get higher off the table so I can actually have more usable space. That being said, we're just gonna kind of catch up on things and talk about some of the realizations I've had this year. After all, we are entering, we, we just had Samhain, Samhain, wow. <sighs> I can words. <laughs> so there, I'm still in that I'm still in that contemplative, reviewing the year kind of scenario. And yeah, we'll take it from there. On the surface, this year has not been what people would consider, at least by traditional standards, a productive year. Because too many people equate pro productivity with money. Did they make money? So I want to talk a little bit about how there are alternate ways of looking at your self-worth and at your productivity. So number one, we're going to talk about YouTube and how I have progressed and been productive there. Two, we're going to talk about self-care actual self-care, not just self-indulgence. And three, we're going to talk about social groups and how I've been productive there. So starting with number one, YouTube. How have I been productive there? I have made over 200 videos this year. It's been a variety of shorts and long form on a wide variety of things. Uh, I've tested out a lot of different stuff. Nothing seemed to really stick. But I've been constantly innovating, constantly upgrading my skills and finding low-cost ways of upping my production value. And I've learned a lot. I'm still a novice when it comes to editing. But I, I can actually edit videos effectively now. <laughs> like I said, I'm still a novice, but I'm seeing growth. I'm seeing progress. What used to take me two and a half hours to do, I could now do in one hour, which is... I know it's a different benchmark than we're typically used to in the United States at this point. But for me, I already knew this was going to be a gap year. In some ways, I have been so exceptionally blessed because even though my father, my relationship with my father was complicated, he still left me such a supreme gift of having enough money I didn't need to worry this year. Despite all of the inflation, the rising prices of food and gas and housing, I didn't have to worry at all. And that has been a remarkable gift. So I've been able to focus on things I wanted to learn, things I wanted to get better at, like this YouTube stuff. So that's part of how I feel I have been productive, how I have been growing this year. Uh, number two. I forgot what number two was, but I do remember that I had uh, social groups, so we'll go to social groups. <laughs> this is the first time I've moved somewhere where I didn't immediately have a built-in method for meeting people. I wasn't going away to college where you're constantly surrounded with new people in each of your classes, your professors. There's a lot of mechanisms for just meeting people that way. I actually had to go out on a limb and try things. 
So I joined a variety of, well, realistically, I joined two sewing-related organizations, the National Sewing Association and the Reading uh, Quilters Guild. And, oh man, the ladies of the Sewing Association have been have been so amazing. First off, I'm the only guy. <laughs> I'm the only man in the group. But they welcomed me with open arms, and it's kind of like having an extra 30 grandmas now. <laughs> Which is just such a blessing. It's so marvelous. Because all of my grandparents are gone. Both of my parents are gone. So being able to build these new connections with those of previous generations, so I still have access to that generational knowledge, has been such an incredible experience. I've gone on dates for the first time in literally years. After my divorce, I didn't go on a date for five, almost five years. And so I did the scary thing and I put myself out there and I started going on dates again. Had quite a few duds, but I also had some really awesome interactions with people. To me, that is growth. That is progress. Did not change my net worth at all as far as money goes. But it changed my perception, both of myself and of where I'm living. Tonight, I did something else. So when I post this, it will have been last night. I, for the first time, went to a gay bar. There's only one option in Reading, but it was, it was nice. I mean, it's a Thursday night, so it was very quiet. I mean, still loud music, but I was there for about an hour and a half chatted with because it was kind of a revolving door of people so I think it was about six different guys that I chatted with over the course of the hour and a half I was there super nice just normal conversation which was so good I kind of forgot how isolated I've been over the course of the last year. Part of that's just been because oh, it takes so long to recover from the amount of stress I was under. I mean, I know I'm still not done. There, There's still going to be more that I'm going to continue discovering needs work. <laughs> but that I could just walk in take a seat, have some casual conversation it was so much fun. And it was just the stupid kind of conversation. The, oh, yeah, so hard to find people to practice Spanish with. I learned in Argentina. They learned in Southern California. Uh, one was Puerto Rican, so there was just the, the casual conversation of getting to know people, but not in the not in the checklist kind of way, just in the conversation developing way, particularly as more people jump in and, and others leave. And it's been such a long time since I've just been in a setting that had free flowing conversation with conversation partners entering and leaving and it not feeling strained or broken or odd as people enter and as people leave. It was just social. I'm realizing I have had so little social interactions that did not involve church. It's, it's a fascinating experience to finally start doing some of these things. To go places where I can just casually meet people. The other thing which was totally awesome is I don't drink alcohol. I know, weird, I went to a bar where when I don't drink. 
but I found I'm not the only one. <laughs> and so I asked for suggestions from the other people who don't drink alcohol. And so I was able to get a really nice strawberry lemonade. It was, oh, it was very sweet though. <laughs> I don't want to know how many calories were in it, but just being able to have those casual interactions, for me, that's a lot of growth in public settings. I mean, in private, in small groups, I've always been <laughs> kind of domineering sometimes as far as conversation goes in small group settings. So it was nice to be able to just let conversation flow. I'm trying to remember what the other thing I said I was going to talk about was. Okay, so benefit of editing the same day you recorded it. Now I know what it was. It was self-care. So as far as being productive and making progress and improving myself when it comes to self-care. And as I specified earlier, not self-indulgence, because they're often in social media now when you hear about self-care, people are actually talking about self-indulgence, where they're just, oh, let me eat whatever I want, let me go do whatever I want, instead of the things that actually take care of you. Over the course of this year, I have been able to protect my time so much that I'm actually sleeping seven to eight hours a night again. In 2023, I was averaging less than five. That's not good self-care. Eating whole foods. Not eating out three. Uh, let's be real. I was eating out more like eight, nine times a week. <laughs> because I would just stop at fast food on the way to and from work. And it was miserable trying to cook at home while being a caregiver because I couldn't eat the same things that my dad could eat because of health problems. So I, I had to revamp my diet now that I'm living on my own. And it's been amazing because as I've gotten more sleep, as I've taken care of my own health, some of the things that I used to have reactions to, I'm not having reactions to anymore. I was told for years I was lactose intolerant. I could have eight ounces of milk with my cereal and not have a reaction. I could eat beef again. It is amazing and terrifying how much stress changes your body, changes what you can and can't eat. Part of self-care is enforcing boundaries. The people whose names show up on my phone in the caller ID that immediately spark anxiety. I've just ignored all their calls. Those who noticed I was ignoring all their calls and then texted me, I explained very clearly I didn't want to talk to them for a year because I needed time to myself. I needed time to heal and recover. I needed time without all the family drama. And that has been so freeing. Realizing I can say no. That has been one of the greatest gifts to myself this year. One of the greatest acts of self-care. To be able to look at the people who are like, Oh, but you're my brother. You're my... You, you go to the same church. You are my neighbor. You are fill in whatever relationship. Why aren't you doing XYZ thing for me anymore? Well... One, I'm not your neighbor anymore, because I moved. Two, uh, siblings, I love you, but I'm between two and five hours away for most of them. One of them's even further. So I can't just drop everything and go help now, which was a deliberate choice. That was part of self-care. Sometimes distance is important. So long story short, in the prioritizing of my own health, in the prioritizing of my own needs, I've been finding it so much easier to enforce boundaries, to not be tempted by a lot of the coping mechanisms that I was using. 
I can actually wake up in the morning and just most mornings, still not always, but most mornings just get up and start doing things. My energy still tends to drop off at three in the afternoon and then it doesn't really come back, but I used to constantly be drinking so much caffeine just to function. I, I don't use caffeine on a daily basis anymore, which is one, I know very odd in the United States, but two, just it feels so good to not be dependent on it. So that's what I mean by self-care. As far as self-care is concerned, I have been so productive this year. But if you look at American politics, actually, no, uh, American business, there we go, American business practices, oh, they think I was a lunatic. Because why aren't you working 60 hours a week? Well, because humans weren't designed for that. <laughs> As it is, I've still been averaging between 20 and 30 hours a week on YouTube. So it's not like I've not been doing anything. It's just been doing different things. I learned how to quilt. Uh, I've got things set up so that uh, now that it's finally cooler again, I can actually start woodworking. Because I prepped a whole bunch of wood and then it got too hot. So uh, over the next couple of weeks, I should be able to start actually making some of the wooden sculptures that I had been planning on for, oh, at this point, almost three years. I've had the supplies for like three years, but wasn't healthy enough or was so just swamped with responsibilities that I couldn't get to it. So I've rambled enough about self-care. Um, we're going to get back to what I recorded earlier. To finish up, I just want to give a little teaser of what I will be, fingers crossed, have finished for not this Saturday, but the Saturday following. I have been working on a long, probably going to be 30 to 40 minutes long video on a deep dive of The Fool. Not just the tarot card, although there will be heavy emphasis on the tarot card, but the archetype of the fool in general, and how we can use the various, because I love how it's been interpreted so many different ways in tarot, how we can take that archetype and apply it to ourselves and our life and learn how to interpret the events of our life through that lens and also how we can take that lens and allow it to magnify our efforts going forward. So that's just a, a little sneak peek of, of what's going to hopefully be finished by next Saturday. So in uh, this is going to go up Friday, so eight days from when this one goes up. Fingers crossed, we hope. That being said, Thank you for listening while I kind of ramble at you. And until next time, walk in the light, dear friends. Bye.